Well, response <coughs> to intervention is a series of tiered interventions that become more intensive if a child doesn't respond to the intervention. So the districts have the responsibility to screen all the students for, in both academics and behavior to, to target the, the skill that needs to be remediate, remediated to determine a course of action and then to monitor that progress. So in essence, what you do is you collect data over time and if the data doesn't work, you go back and you make a more intensive intervention. Now there are several facets of response to intervention that I want to talk about. One is, this is a regular education initiative. We're talking about things that happen in the regular education classroom. It's classroom-based. It's about instruction. It's about those resources. In the first two tiers, it doesn't really look at kids. It looks at, it looks at what the, um, at classroom-based instruction. Another point, it's data-based. So you collect data. You can't simply make a referral because you say something like, you know, Judy is never in her seat. You have to have the data, the exact data points to be able to describe that. The third thing is that it's research-based interventions. And, and that often makes teachers antsy when you talk about research-based or peer-reviewed. All that means is that the interventions that you do are those that have, that have a proven track record of succeeding with kids who present with similar issues. That's all it means. So what does this look like? Tier one is what we expect every classroom teacher to be able to do. So that the child, at the beginning of the year, your class comes in, you look at the kids that are in the classroom, and you say, okay, you know, I see some. And, and usually, you know, by the screening, teachers have a way of sort of looking at their classroom and knowing the kids that they're gonna be, oh, that are gonna be okay, ones that are gonna need something special. So Judy shows up, and she's a little antsy, and she doesn't pay attention all the time. So what does the teacher do? We'll probably go and review the file, maybe talk to last year's teacher, do something, and then maybe you need to do some preferential seating or something. But it's, it's everything that happens in the classroom. So it's classroom-based. Tier two is a little more intensive. Tier two involves teaming. It involves going to a team, and it involves looking at some other resources in the school. So what might that do? It might be some small group instruction. It may be you've got a social worker in a school, or maybe you've got Occupational therapists are great for being in classrooms, helping you with wiggly kids. They have moving sit cushions. They have all kinds of things. But you go and you sort of get some more. You get some more information. You get somebody else to come in and help. Maybe two, two teachers decide that they can group for math. You do something within existing resources. But it's becoming a little more, a little more intervention, a little more intensive, if you will. Tier three. You start to focus on the kid. And I've always distinguished pre-referral practices is that with anything that you're doing in pre-referral is focusing on the adults and what we can do, how we can change our instructional practice. The second you start looking at a kid and you start saying, oh, oops, maybe something's going on with Judy that we should look at more closely. And if you do something, more intervention, maybe one-to-one -one here with the one-to-one -one point now, if you realize that that sort of intervention is going to have to be more sustained and continuous, then you're starting to look for a referral for special education. But you can see you've done a lot before you get to that point. And when you, at this point, if you're going to make a referral, the other interventions stay in place. You still continue to do those things. And you still need to evaluate. Another important point to make, at any point in this process, tier one, tier two, if a parent decides that they want to do request a full evaluation, they have the right to do that. So they can, if they, if they want to, they can leap over the process. But when you get to tier three, that's when you go for another evaluation and you probably decide that you're gonna to have to move to something more significant. So those are like the three tiers. Sometimes it's a four tier model, but you can see that at each level it becomes more intensive and then at some point it becomes really child focused. So let me talk about this in a way that makes sense to me, which is I, I liken it to a medical model. In a medical model, I show up for my annual every year, and the doctor looks at some data. She looks at my, my chart. She looks at my lab work. She looks at me when I'm taking for medication. She listens to a few things with me. And if everything is going fine, then I sort of get sent along and I come back a year from now. Everything. She may make a couple adjustments in my medication, whatever, but I go off. If I show back up in uh, maybe two months later and I'm having trouble sleeping and I've got a persistent cough and I've got something going on, then you know she's going to do another level. She's going to prescribe for me 
a regimen that, uh, that has worked, that's been proven to work with, with people who present with symptoms like mine, tier two. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get something a little bit different, and she's going to change something about that. And then I'm going to go off, but this time I don't go off for a whole year because she's going to collect data. So I'm probably going to go off for some period of time that she's going to prescribe. And when I come back, if those interventions have worked, okay, great, I'm back to this annual schedule, or I'm back to the classroom, if you will, if you make the analogy. If it hasn't worked, then what she's going to do is send me to a specialist, tier three. So we can make that. It, for me, it makes a pretty good sort of analogy to be able to do that. So that's talking about it as a medical model.